Hi, today I'm going to talk about the Titanic's journey, a tragic voyage. Titanic construction. Titanic was constructed on Queen's Island, now known as the Titanic Quarter in Belfast Harbour, Ireland. The chief designer of the Titanic was Thomas Andrews. 14,000 men worked at the Harland Wolf shipyard in Belfast, 3,000 of whom worked for three years to construct the Titanic. It was about 270 meters in length, 53 meters in height. Titanic was owned by the White Star Line. It took $7.5 million to build. The Titanic was the biggest and most luxurious ship of her time. It was elegant with an onboard gym, swimming pool, libraries, high class restaurants, and magnificent cabins. It was also named the Ship of Dreams and the Unsinkable Ship. Traveling on the Titanic was seen as a symbol of social status and prestige, as it was marketed as the most prestigious and safe ocean liner of its time. This reassured passengers about the safety of the journey. The Titanic's Journey the Titanic set sail from Southampton in England on April 10, 1912. It stopped at Cherbourg, France on April 10, 1912. It continued to Queenstown, now known as Cobb Island, on April 11, 1912. The intended destination was New York City, United States. It tragically struck an iceberg and sank in the North Atlantic Ocean on the night of April 14, 1912 before reaching its destination. It was intended to travel almost 2,825 miles from Southampton, England, to New York City. Titanic traveled about 2,070 miles, which is around 70% of the total distance. Life aboard the Titanic is different based on classes. For first class, people were wealthy and prominent individuals such as the aristocracy, celebrities, politicians, and businessmen. Facilities, spacious and luxurious accommodations, private cabins with in suite bathrooms, access to elegant dining rooms, exclusive lounges, reading rooms, and smoking rooms, a grand staircase, access to a gymnasium, swimming pool, and Turkish bath. Food, a la carte dining with a wide variety of high quality menu options. The menu included dishes like oysters, filet mignon, roast duckling, and various desserts. For second class, people were middle class families, tourists, and traveling professionals. Facilities, comfortable accommodations, cabins with several shared bathroom facilities, access to a dedicated dining room for second-class passengers, lounge areas for relaxation and socializing, food, high-quality meals with fewer choices compared to first class. The menu included items like roast beef, lamb, and fish dishes. Third class, people were immigrants, diverse groups with many nationalities and ethnic groups. Facilities, more basic accommodations with shared cabins and communal bathrooms, a separate dining room for third class passengers, limited recreational facilities but often included open deck spaces for fresh air, food. Food was nourishing but less elaborate than that was available in first and second class. Breakfast items included porridge, bread, and tea or coffee. Lunch and dinner might include soup, a meat dish, potatoes, vegetables, and pudding for dessert. Was Titanic an incredibly luxurious ship for all its passengers? Let's see and discuss. It could be argued that the Titanic was a luxurious ship for everyone aboard. This was supported by several factors. Overall comfort. The ship's interiors were well appointed and there were areas for recreation, socializing, and relaxation on all decks. Attention to detail. 
The Titanic was known for its attention to detail and design and service. Even passengers in third class experience amenities like better quality bedding and a more organized, regulated dining experience than they might have found on other ships. Safety standards. The Titanic was considered state of the art in terms of safety features, with a high number of light boats, which was in Tended to benefit all passengers. Quality dining. All passengers on the Titanic received nourishing meals and the dining experience was designed to be of reasonable quality given their class. This made the Titanic a luxurious ship because it provided a more comfortable and safer experience for all passengers compared to many other ships of the time. On the other hand, it could be argued that the Titanic was not lu a luxurious ship for everyone aboard. This was supported by class disparities, the opulence and amenities available to first class passengers were vastly superior to those in second and third class, accommodations, while first class passengers enjoyed spacious and well appointed cabins with private bathrooms, Many third-class passengers had to share cabins and communal bathrooms. Second-class accommodations, while better than third-class, were not on par with first-class in terms of luxury. Dining. The dining experience in first-class included an a la carte menu with a wide range of gourmet options, while second and third class passengers had more limited choices, and the quality of food and dining experience was notably different. The class based distinctions in accommodations, dining amenities, and social experiences on the Titanic make it clear that the ship was not a luxurious experience for everyone aboard. Overall, I would agree that the luxury was most pronounced in first class and passengers in second and third class had progressively fewer amenities and opulence. While the Titanic provided a relatively high standard of comfort for all, it wasn't equally luxurious for everyone aboard. Poster to advertise the Titanic. Join us on an extraordinary voyage aboard the legendary Titanic. Step aboard the first class of the Titanic, the epitome of safety, opulence, and sophistication. To New York, Wednesday, April 10th, 1912, from Southampton. Luxurious stage rooms, beautifully decorated. Exquisite meals prepared by skilled chef with a variety of gourmet options. In addition to an a la carte menu offering a wide range of dishes tailored to your preferences. Impeccable high quality service from a dedicated team of stewards and stewardesses. Exclusive lounges and common areas where you can relax, socialize, and enjoy live music. Access to a gymnasium with state-of-the-art exercise equipment and a heated swimming pool. Evening entertainment including concerts, card games, and various social events, creating a sophisticated and enjoyable atmosphere. Exclusive access to the op opulent grand staircase and private entrances to dining areas and much more. But what exactly happened on the night? The Titanic collided with the iceberg on the night of April 14, 1912 at around 11.40 p.m. It was not until 12.40 a.m., an hour after Titanic struck the iceberg on 14 April, that the first lifeboat was lowered into the sea. The order to lower the lifeboat on the Titanic was given by the ship's officers, primarily under the command of Captain Edward Smith, 
women and children were given priority to board the lifeboats, which is a common practice to ensure the safety of the most vulnerable, but this was not consistently followed. The Titanic sank beneath the waves on the morning of April 15, 1912. The exact time of the sinking is estimated to be around 2.20 a.m. Ineffective poorly handled lowering of the lifeboats. Reasons to support that lowering of the lifeboats on the Titanic was poorly handled. Insufficient lifeboats. The ship was designed to carry 64 lifeboats, but it had only 20 lifeboats. Crew training. Many of the crew members responsible for launching and manning the lifeboats had not received proper training in lifeboat operations. Partial capacity. Some lifeboats were launched with far fewer passengers than their capacity allowed. Class distinction. There were instances where the women and children first Protocol was not consistently followed. In some cases, first-class passengers had an advantage in boarding lifeboats. Communication and organization. There were many communication problems and a lack of clear instructions regarding the evacuation. Who are the main suspects? Edward Smith, because he was responsible for the ship's speed, Titanic was traveling quickly through a region full of icebergs. And the warnings about icebergs were ignored. Titanic continued on the same course. Or Thomas Andrews, because Titanic did not have enough lifeboats for everyone aboard. It is estimated that there were only enough spaces for half of Titanic's passengers and crew, and also because Titanic had bulkheads that separate its compartments. They did not reach the ceiling, so water was able to tip over each one and pull the ship down. Or was it an accident? Because the iceberg had recently flipped over and was a dark blue in color. It would have been hard to spot in the night and would have weighted at least 20,000 tons. Technology 1912 was not developed enough to withstand this type of collision. As a conclusion, the responsibility for the Titanic's collusion with the icebergs and the subsequent damage incurred by the ship lies with several factors and individuals. Captain and Edward Smith, Thomas Andrews, the ship's crew, the ship's owners and management. How sinking was handled? Historical sources. Source A suggests that Andrews might have failed to keep Titanic's passengers and crew safe because the number of lifeboats is in a decade and below what is required for all passengers and crew which impacted the safety of the ship in the event of an emergency. Source C suggests that Andrews was not to blame. This is shown by the fact that the maritime safety regulations for lifeboats were primarily based on the gross tonnage of a ship rather than the number of passengers it could carry. Source B suggests that Smith failed to evacuate the ship safely. I can tell this because the lifeboat never came back, which is a shortage in the ship's operation, which was the domain of the captain. Please have a look on my article that I wrote, Tragedy Strikes as the Titanic Sinks, over 1,500 lives lost in historic maritime disaster. <laughs>
Thanks for listening and hope you enjoyed my video.